All right, so uh, I'd like to talk about some drawing methods um, that I think will be very useful for people who are drawing, or yeah, for people who are going to be drawing concept art, which must later be turned into um, 3D models. So basically, stuff that you know either the artist is going to be modeling this stuff and handing it off to a 3D artist to model, or the artist themselves will be the 3D modeler. But um, the thing is this, is that when you're working on a, a piece of 3D software, um, it's just really hard to create 3D forms. And, uh, you know, this is, this is sort of why I'm, you know, why I think it's kind of worth talking about this stuff. Um, because when it comes to drawing, if you really know how to draw, you can create 3D form really, really, really fast. And, you know, maybe not, definitely not as, as precise as, um, as what you can create, you know, in an actual 3D program. But, um, you know, you have the speed, and because it's so fast, you know, you can, you can come up with ideas faster. And I, I think that when it comes to sketches, uh, and there's a big difference between, say, a sketch and an illustration, is that the sketch must be something that is disposable, easy to create, so this way you can, you know, come up with you can come up with many, many different designs. Um, the idea is that you don't want to invest too much into making a perfect illustration because, uh, you know, if, what, if you invest too much effort into making, you know, a perfectly clean illustration, it's all precise and everything, um, you're not going to want to ditch the drawing, um, you know, and, and, and as a result, you just won't explore other ideas. You'll just, you'll be... You know, if you have a if you have bad ideas in the drawing, but it's beautifully illustrated, you know, you're just going to want to stick with that one um, thing. And I and and just case in point, I find that my first ideas are usually my worst ideas. Um, usually, okay. Sometimes, you know, once in a while, I really do, you know, knock one out of the park on my as my first idea. But that is the exception to the rule and not the rule. Um, so the thing is this: you want to be able to draw and create form very quickly. Um, you can't draw and create form and come up with ideas and, and do any ideation. Um, you can't really get into the design mindset if you are feeling really, really, um, if you're feeling very tense about the drawing and you're trying to make perfect illustrations, uh, that it just, sorry, it, just, it will not come out um, the way you want it to. In fact, um, I find that design um, is, is a search. You have to search for what you want. So. You know, those are my reasons for you know going through this video and talking about it and and you know in the meantime I've been while I've been babbling I've been just kind of doodling and showing you kind of these this is the idea of some of the stuff that I want to talk about so you're going to be create uh, the thing is that um, you want to aim you want to work towards uh, being able to draw things that look like they are three dimensional you want to be able to push stuff into the canvas and so um, I think probably the most important, well, one of the, the skills that I'm going to give you is taking flat shapes and making them three-dimensional. So you have to be able to take any kind of arbitrary flat shape like this, and then on the concaves, pull. You want to pull in, um, you know, one or two lines. And it, which one you pull is going to be really important because, as you notice, it really changes um, the form, right? So this is the most important thing, is that you're... Your, the, the intent of your drawings should be to convey three-dimensional information that could easily be um, you know, interpreted and modeled and understood by you know, somebody who is going to model um, you know, your objects. So you know, this is a way of drawing that is not very stylistic. It is ugly because it's not an illustration. It is a design drawing. Um, it is meant to inform people, and it should be... Um, I, I feel that you know this, this drawings of this nature should be informative. They should not deceive. They should be very clear and easy to understand. Um, aesthetics is not the goal of this drawing. You know, unless you're doing like a render pass, you know, which is you know um, something which would show the types of materials and shaders that would be used to render it. But just as a modeler drawing, I guess maybe that's probably the best. I don't, I don't, I don't know if there's any terminology out there. If there is, great. Uh, if there isn't, well, I'll have to make some up. Um, but you know, for stuff that is going to be modeled, you know, a model drawing, um, you know, t 
take you have to be able to take flat shapes because everything that you draw on a piece of pa uh, paper the subject is going to be three dimensional but the drawing ultimately is flat and you have to make it look three dimensional so what i'm doing right now is i'm is that 3d modelers work uh, often in isoparms you know now there's new technologies coming up but you know the old style and which is kind of the, the classic and standard as of this uh, this this tem demo is um, you know to have a lot of these surface isoparms and you know this is if you're doing any kind of NURBS surface modeling um, you know you're gonna want to use something which really shows how the lines wrap over the surface form and of course if you want you can draw you know very slightly you know kind of sketch the other side of it but sometimes I find this um, this simply confuses the issue you know it comes out sometimes it makes the drawing actually harder to understand um, you know in cases like that where you have to see the other side then you know you just have to draw the you'll just have to draw it from another angle um, you know and another thing is that when you draw your drawings you want to don't just do like you know top front side orthographic drawings because those don't show um, those don't show any depth information and then you kind of have to correlate between top front and side and if you have a shape that is really unusual you know like uh, something like this where you know your shape who knows like what the form is but it's like it's twisting up and it's got a lot of ambiguity and there's you know pieces that are sticking out at odd angles you know I mean it's not everything that people are going to model is going to be you know a square boxy house um, you know things are going to have protrusions and they're going to be all kind of weirdly angled um, you know you can't give a an orthographic top front side drawing of this object to a 3D modeler but what you can do is you can give maybe a three-quarter maybe a couple of three-quarter perspectives or maybe more whatever's necessary um, to get this these ideas across so maybe I'm not talking so much about techniques to use but I'm I'm, I'm definitely talking about um, the intents, the, the requirements, the needs and purposes of your drawing. And you know, from that, you know, hopefully you'll be able to distill and figure out some uh, techniques of your own. Uh, you know, I, I'm going to try and get into some of those by the time this babbling conversation is over. But you, know, you want to be able to convey you know, 3D shapes. Um, so I, what I'm really trying to do right now is I'm trying to instill within you a a need and a hunger to learn how to do this stuff you know I'm, I'm not just gonna throw a bunch of techniques at you and say here look you know um, you know here's a technique and you know we don't even know what it's good for you know, I'm, I'm just trying to give you um, you know the desire to learn um, this this sort of thing um, and okay so anyway uh, let's see what else can I show you right so step one is um, you know one of the most important tools uh, in my toolbox is um, being able to control an ellipse, and you know, and this this circle is the same thing as um, you know this circle right here, and same thing as that circle there, and and this circle here. These are all circles that are just drawn slowly, tilting either towards or away from the viewer. But the aspect ratio of the ellipse, right? This is an aspect ratio of one to one. It's a circle, right? It's a disc that is being seen from straight on. Right. Whereas this is an aspect ratio of one to zero, in which case we're seeing the thing from like just flat on. So you know, if I draw this as you know a cylinder, I'm going to draw some isoparms on that surface. Right. Um, you know, it will probably look like this from the side. If you look at it from the top, it'll look like that. But there's all the stages in between. Right. This is what the orthographic drawings will tend to miss. Is they don't they they miss all the intermediary steps in between. So uh, you have to be able to draw ellipses, not just like flat lines and circles, but you need to be able to draw ellipses in every different aspect ratio, like this, right? You got to be able to create slinkies, um, or sometimes, uh, as is, you know, what I like doing is this. This is my, this is something that I do, right? So you're not going to learn this stuff overnight. You're not going to learn it just from watching this video once or twice. Um, you know, you have to plug away at this stuff. All right, it took me like two weeks to master this exercise right here. Um, you know, and and I and I'm talking like I was was not doing anything else but trying to figure this thing out. So you know, it's not going to come easy. 
Um, but the reward is that, well, you can bang this stuff out really fast and um, maybe you can get a job doing, you know, this sort of, uh, con like, doing concept art that is actually uh, useful to a 3D modeler because, you know, uh, concept art like this, you know, where it's just, you know, drawings like this are not very useful to 3D uh, modelers because they don't know what shapes to use. They don't know any, any you know, there's no information. There's no, you know, even, I guess you could, you know, try doing a top, front, and side, but the thing is that even if you do top, front, and side, you know, the things won't necessarily, the features won't necessarily correlate. All right, so what you need, really need to be able to do is if you're going to give, you know, a 3D modeler necessary information to craft this object you know think about think about a factory worker right it's like if you're going to give information to a factory worker or a craftsman a woodcutter right you want to give them information that you know that shows volume it shows depth it it shows you know how what kind of surface they're going to have to carve out you know just because you're working in 2d doesn't mean that you get to have an easy task of this Rather, you actually have a really hard task, but if you know what you're doing and you are good at drawing, um, you know, and or rather, you make yourself good at drawing, I should say, um, you know, then then this stuff becomes easy, and you can bang this stuff out faster than the woodcarver can. Um, usually, you know, I I have worked in 3D, and you know, originally I you know I was really drawn towards 3D because it solved all the problems of perspective, but then a lot of times I would get kind of lost in my model and just sit there pushing and pulling points, not knowing exactly what I wanted because it just the interface is not the most intuitive. Even though you can rotate the drawing, uh, rotate the, um, the the wireframe, um, you know, there's still ambiguities as to how surfaces join to one another. So this is really, really important stuff. So right now what I'm doing is I is when I do 3D models, I tend to go over them, you know, in at least, you know, two, two different axes. You know, I can go over them slicing them up this way, right? So I can slice the, slice them up in this axis, right? So we imagine a spindle like that. So I can slice them up this direction. I can also slice them up going this way, right? And uh, if need be, I could even slice them going this way as well, right? Going straight out that direction, right? So I can slice it in three different di uh, directions. But it's not just the three different directions. You could really slice any object any way you wanted to. Um, and and for that, you know, there's several different techniques you can use, right? I tend to start. You know, if you're going to start practicing this stuff, then you know you can start out with trying to slice up spheres in this manner. There and there, right? Now, there's there's a lot of kind of tricks to this. Um, for one thing, you know, these slices that you're seeing, these are ellipses. These are elliptical segments, right? They go through. Um, you know, if I look at something like this and just divide up this object evenly, it looks flat. If I do this, I divide it in half, and I push, and I do a bit of a bias. You see the difference? Now I am conveying roundness. I am making, I push those lines out that way, and I'm conveying roundness to a cylinder, you know, to, a, to this. And the reason for that is that if I were to line this up, let's, let's line this up to a circle, okay? And we'll treat this like a clock, and I divide this into 90 degree segments and now I divide it into 45 degree segments. Now you see that if I line up those diagonals right there, they will line up. They'll line right up like that. Okay, that is the reason why there is an outside bias on these. So if you want to show roundness, that's what you have to do, is you have to push the spacing of the lines towards the sides or it won't work out for you. So Examples of this, you know, are visible in a lot of things that I do, right? Sometimes I do this. I call this drilling in, right? Because what I'm doing is I'm, I'm 
with the spacing of my zigzags, I am drilling into space. I am pushing things away. If I if I do something like this, like hang on, whoops, and I do regular, this is flatting, right? Because it's flat, it's flat against the camera. And then I can do this. This is drilling out, and then I can flat again. So I can just do two lines and keep it simple, right? And then just keep it consistent. And then drill back in again, and you can drill out. Right? You see how that gives a sense of distance, it gives a sense of perspective. Right? So you gotta be able to drill in. Right? And you can also you can drill and turn. Right? This is a lot this is what I do a lot when I deal with my landscapes. I do a lot of this drilling in and turning. And you know, here's another thing is I can do sidewall, right? This is this is a sidewall contour. Because it's you know, it's like I'm looking at the side of it. Right, so you want to be able to drill. Whenever surfaces start turning away from you, you drill into them like that. Right, so you push things away. You got to feel. You got to feel it. You got to feel. You know, if you want things to curve away from you or to drill away from you. All right. So this this is why I like teaching landscape because landscape is there's it's it's amorphous detail. It's not always orthographic. It's not always going to be. Right, so you got to be able to drill out. You got to be able to drill in. Uh, you got to be able to drill underneath things. You know, if I do an archway, I need to be able to drill in, drill in, right, drill in. Really push that away. And this is this is like um, if you take if you do flash photography with a camera, right? What's happening is the surfaces that face you they are the lighter ones. So you know your drawing may not have beautiful perfectly square isoparms on them, you know, perfect quadrilaterals, but, you know, you can still use this drill in technique on various things. You know, you can drill in in different directions, drilling in here, and I can force a hole into the paper, right? So you got to push in. I've now forced a hole into the paper like that. Okay. So this is this is the key thing is that you're always you know using I, and and I'm hatching in these little patches too. This is something that my my hand is um, this is just a, a very small kind of wrist movement when I do that. If I use my arm, my whole arm, then I can drill in um, with large pieces like this. Okay, so I can drill in and drill out. All right, so all of this stuff is just drilling, I guess. So I can take any three any arbitrary shape, arbitrary form, and drill in onto it. Okay, there's there's multiple techniques. This is one of them that I'm showing you. You can use this technique. Um the the it's just like it's there it's just a tool. There's no rule. Like like Glenn, my 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 old buddy Glenn would say, there's no rules, just many tools. So you can use this whenever use the tool for the job. Use the one that that um, that suits the situation best. So I'm going to show you this one. I would suggest that you learn, you know, that you get really good at at least at at least one tool. Then when once you kind of get good at one tool, you understand how it feels to be able to um, to use that tool to to control the form and shape of a surface, right? So I say learn one tool really, really well before you move on to the other. Don't learn 15, 000, you know, 15 tools and just be sucky at all of them. You, you don't want to do that. Um, so you know, there's drilling in. Okay. Then there is the line wrapping stuff, elliptical line wrapping or isoparms, right? So this is another way to do it. Another another thing um, is surface normals. You probably saw this earlier when I was doing ellipses and, and creating these kinds of thumbtack lines, right? So it's like a thumbtack. And so again, you can go over the same form, and you can start, you know, thumbtacking the, the the hell out of this thing, right? Just thumbtack in all directions, right? And notice how I'm trying to stay planar with the surface, right? So I'm I'm drawing surface normals by thumbtacking the whole thing, because I'm I'm basically putting these upside down thumbtacks all over it. Cover the whole thing, you know. You gotta you you have well when I talk about drilling, okay, um, you know not just the drilling in stuff, but I mean, when I talk about really learning something and practicing something, you have to use the tool in all tech, you know, like in, in all given situations, all possible situations, then you really get good at it. You know, you have to do it until you're comfortable and this stuff is second nature. I mean, for me, it's 
fairly second nature and that I can, you know, I'm at, I have it at the point where I can babble nonstop while doing it, right? But even then, it still requires um, a degree of con concentration. Um, you know, and then again, there's, uh, you know, there's doing, you know, controlling the aspect ratio of an ellipse is no easy task. Okay, so I mean, being able to squish, squish the circle and then reverse direction, right? This is done to control the thing turning around. I'm making this, this ellipse turn around. I am, look, I'm going counterclockwise. Now I go into zigzags, now I'm going clockwise, right? When you turn something around, the direction is going to change. This is one exercise. You're trying to always keep touching the top, the middle, and the bottom at all times, right? What you do not do is you do not do this. Okay, that, no, fail. You don't do this. Okay, fail. Um, you do not do this. Okay, because you know it's no longer elliptical. All right, you. Gosh, I actually had to. It's like it's so ingrained in me in that I, I actually had to break. I had to break my my drawing to do it like that. Okay, don't do that. That that's fail as well. All right, this. I mean, it's okay to do them when, when you're practicing, right? Like, when you're practicing, you're going to get some, some bum drawings in there. But, but the thing is, you haven't learned how to do it until you can do it like this. You practice this until you get it like this, right? Same thing with the drilling. You know, you've got you've to gotta control it. You've got to be able to really, here, I can really drill that and make that go away, right? Make that go away from me. Okay, so you've got to practice this. If you, you know, if you want to do, be doing any kind of 3D models, like handing this stuff off to a 3D modeler, and you don't want them to like say, I don't understand this shape, I can't fucking model this, I throw it back in your face. You don't want that, right? Because then it means you're out of a job. And, and you know, it's, I just say, you know, get really good at this stuff and practice, because it is hard. It's hard. And, but the thing is that when you get good at it and you, it becomes second nature, then drawing actually becomes fun. Um, so, you know, that, that's important. Um, what else can, can I show you? Um, right, taking a whole sphere. Right, this is more of the thumbtacking stuff, right? Being able to draw ellipses all over the thing, right? It's, it's just, this is really kind of the first step to thumbtacking is you can do this. Right, and so now, not only am I controlling the aspect ratio of the circle, but I am con uh, of the circles, but I'm I'm also applying a tilt. Right, there's a major axis, and that tilt is perpendicular to you know the center point going out. Perpendicular. See, and what are these lines perpendicular. So yeah, you got to have some control over geometry when you do this. Um, what else? Ah, uh, right. Sometimes I do elliptical drilling, right? So, you know, when I can do this, you know, sometimes I will drill out to make a cylinder. This is a cylindrical shape, right, on the side. It's going to be like this. In the front, it's going to be like this. This way, it's going to be like that, right? What else is there? There's this is freeform, freeform drill or freeform kind of wobble line, but you'll notice, again, I'm doing that outside bias, right? The spacing of my lines is tending towards the outside. Okay, I'm just using an outside bias to make this three-dimensional. And yes, fine, great, you made it work on a sphere. That is only a test pattern. You next have to be able to do it on arbitrary flat shapes. Okay be able to describe a three-dimensional form. Sorry, this, this, now I actually have to concentrate because it's not just, um, whoops, it's because it's not, actually no, let's just keep on, on going because that was actually okay, right? So, you know, you can describe a whole person's head using this technique. And, you know, gradually, you'll notice that I'm feeling it all out, and I'm just feeling it out. And, yeah, there's, there's mistakes, but, you know, you just keep on going, and you can correct it. So, I mean, this is what you eventually lead towards, right, is that you can 
And in my case, like if I hold up my hand and try to, you know, do the same technique, right? So you got to be able to do this. It's like, yeah, okay, great. You can do the the um, do the arbitrary forms, but then you still have to be able to apply it to actual subject matters, right? So all of this stuff has an end application. It all has an end use. Sorry, yeah, it, this actually takes my concentration now because like now I'm analyzing and I'm not just doing things that are that I know, you know, from the back of my hand. Okay, so this is this is the thing. It's like now we can let's try this. You know, it doesn't just have to be on, you know, heads and hands and body parts, but you know, let's try Okay, right? So that's the thing. Get really good at this technique, and you can doodle out, you know, whatever pretty much your heart's desires, um, you know, really, really fast. And this can later be refined, you know, by a 3D modeler, right? Because it's it's using all of the above techniques that I just, you know, it's it's, it's this is the freeform doodle. Um, what else uh, can I show you? Um, Right. How about how about this? How about this exercise? So you also have to be able to kind of break down. Right. This is a zigzag turning into. So here, I'm going to just do it really, really fast. Um, you need to see it. All right. And uh, then there's the other form of doing this, which is like this. All right. So I mean, I've got I can I'm going around on two different axes, and then I can do the same thing on this one. And um, all right. So there's a whole bunch of things going on. Number one, I'm basically dividing this thing this whole thing up into these elliptical sections like this and i'm not just drawing any old dumb circles there is you know or, or just just dumb ellipses common mistake is this common mistake is keeping your ellipses vertical all the way around does not work not right um we look at these at the ellipse there's a perpendicular perpendicular right here perpendicular okay it's, you have to find something which is a perpendicular tangent like that these lines do not point towards the center point right some of these lines were going to crisscross in different directions like that but the key thing is that they are perpendicularly tangential, <laughs> or no? There, you can have to imagine a tangent on this. Then you have to imagine a perpendicular normal coming off of that. That is going. This perpendicular line. This is going to be the major axis for your ellipse. All right. So there's a tilt to these ellipses. Watch. Right. So you have to be able to tilt like that. Then you have to be able to handle transitions between zigzag, right? From regular unbiased. This, this is why I call an unbiased zigzag. Zed like this. This is an unbiased zigzag. You have to go from an unbiased zigzag into a biased zigzag like that. Not so hard, right? This is easy. You can do that. And you have to go from an, a biased zigzag into biased loops like that. So zigzag, biased loops and tilt. You see how it's tilting? So this is what I do when I 
do this exercise. <laughs> and now when you come on over, when you go around, you have to be able to go from this loop to circles, full-fledged, you know, either circles or ellipses. And then you're going from these circles back into upside-down bias loops, which then becomes zigzags, which, <laughs> which reverses. Now it becomes loops going the other direction. Because remember, whenever a circle passes this midline, it changes to zigzags, and then the, the, the circle changes direction. So yeah, remember when I said doing this simple exercise took me two weeks to master, and I spent all my time and I focused all my efforts on learning that? I wasn't kidding. All right. Don't go. Don't. I don't want to hear anyone going. Oh, I'll never be able to do that. Oh. I, uh, uh. Well, I don't know. Well, then you might as well just give up on your job. You know. You know, might as well just give up on your career choice then. You know, because this is a good skill to have. Actually, this is an essential skill to have. Um, I'm not saying you must do it this way, but I say this is really, really hard. And if you can make this easy for yourself by getting good at it, everything else that you do will be easier. And you'll be able to do this stuff for 8 to 10 hours a day. And what do you know? You know, earn a salary or, well, I don't know. I, I'm not, well, I'm skilled and I don't earn a salary and I am a poor, um, a poor guy. But I, I guarantee you, you know, you're not going to do any better than I am if you don't have this skill. Um, and so, yeah. And I'm poor because I refuse to work for companies earning a regular salary just because, bleh, because I'm a hermit. Anyway, um, yeah, so this is one such thing. The other one is this. All right, this is the other one. And you could also modify the exercise to do spheres. And then, conversely, you can combine the thumbtacking to do the same thing. All right, so I'm just putting spheres on spheres, but their poles are all being aligned to the surface normals of the sphere. And then if you really want, if you just, you know, I don't know, if you just need to go deeper, then by all means, start putting spheres on spheres on spheres. You can fractalize this exercise. Didn't mean to rhyme. Okay, so get good at this stuff, really, seriously. I'm, I'm not joking. Um, this, this stuff will be I wouldn't say a lifesaver, I say it becomes a way of life. What else? I don't know. Got to think. Um, yeah. Oops. Let's see, what can I show you? Mm -hmm. Right. Cubes. I have that other video. Look for it. It's called Box Stravaganza, which is all about drawing cubes and some of their pitfalls. All right, this is another one that is important. And then, you know, even before you can really get into this stuff, you know, you have to be able to develop the mindset where, you know, just your basic draftsmanship, simply having good hand-eye coordination. And, you know, this is this is hard, right? Just good hand-eye coordination where you can draw circles, you can draw um, radial, radiating lines, and they all come from this one center point, you know, and they always return to that one center point. And, you know, it's especially hard if you're doing it on paper or on a Cintiq. Um, well, actually, even a regular tablet is tough because the uh, hand-eye coordination problem. But I mean, here, like I'll I'll show you, except this time I'll have to use a fatter brush, right? Okay, so you can see that, right? So, exercise. Now, 
going around. You can start in any direction. Okay, so you're pretty much going to see, right, you want to go right out and hit, hit the line. Hit the line, return to the spot, and you take your time. Now, the reason I say this is tough to do on a Cintiq is because this area here and this area here are going to be tough because your hand is obscuring. Your hand is obscuring. All right. So in this case, you keep your hand moving. You, you draw from the arm. You do not use your wrist. You don't use your wrist because doing this, doing it this way, drawing from your shoulder and your elbow, it keeps your hand moving, right? Here, you, your memory, your, your persistence of vision is going to keep the image visible, right? The moment I sit here and I sit still, your, your, your visual memory begins to fade. It doesn't last very long. All right, so just don't use your fingertips to draw. Just get used to using your whole arm. If your arm begins to hurt, well, take a rest and then continue, like after you take your rest. All right, you don't stop doing this. Yeah, it's not comfortable at first. I used to get some terrible cramps and pains and stuff. And you know, even if I do if I do this stuff for eight hours a day, yeah, I get pains as well. Um, but the thing is that you will get stronger. You know, you can do this for longer and longer. And so, you know, like don't 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 injure yourself. But you know, this is I find I can do this for pretty long. And it's just being able to do circles like this, also very important. Okay, and then being able to control point, point, point. Ghosting. Ghosting is when you move in a, in, in a path and you're looking at this form that is being created. You look at the circle that is being created by the movement of your pen. And the ghosting is used to line up to those three dots. Afterwards, I could say take two points and ghost and touch those two points like that. And you apply a little bit of pressure. And you can push the circle through. All right, these are test patterns. I'm pushing it through the two points. This is you know, simply being able to control the pen. This is part of draftsmanship. You know, I'm not using like smoothing foot pedals or any of that stuff right now. It's all off. All right, so you got to be able to get get a degree of precision. I mean, as much precision as a robot made of meat can get. Right. I mean, there's this exercise, but I always like inscribing it within a large circle. Okay, don't don't be doing like little. I mean, you can do small circles, okay, but you're you haven't aced it if you do small circles. Um, all right, this is much harder. Okay, and and what I'm not doing is this. All right, I'm not going blah 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 blah. You know, okay. Um, usually, what happens is something like like that, right? That's no. Do you know? Try to do a good job and get a target. Okay, you try not to overshoot, try not to undershoot. Okay, try not to do that stuff. Eh. All right. Come on. You you have to do this stuff. And also if you find you have a tough area, like I was talking about this quadrant here and this quadrant here, if you're left handed, then these these will be the, the hard quadrants where the O's are. Okay, so if you're having trouble with these hard quadrants, then back up and go over them again. And whatever you do, that stylus does not leave the paper, does not leave the tablet until you have gotten satisfactory results. You might have to do hundreds of these pages, okay? But you have to think to yourself what you're doing wrong and figure it out, you know, just. No one. That that's the thing is I, I 
I am self-taught. I didn't have anyone holding my hand. You know, I had to set my own standards. You have to set your standards. Set them high. And, you know, understand that you're not going to be, you're going to be taking yourself out of the workforce for a little while while you get better. Because this is a journey that only you can partake in. You know, you have to do it. You're going to have to go it alone. Oh, yeah, I overdid that one. Okay, so if I overdo it, then fine, I'll just go back. I'll scrub over it. Don't move so fast that you lose com complete control of the pen. You know, the, the whole thing is control. You must learn control. And then we can take this thing and turn it into an ellipse. Okay. Anyway, I think that's enough for now. This video is long enough. 40 minutes long. All right, goodbye.